In this video, I'm going to show you how you can edit or replace certain of your muscle masks without using attribute paint. In other words, using procedural methods. So if we look at the tendon mask on the muscles created by the muscle properties node, we'll see that for a lot of them, it looks pretty good. But for certain shapes, such as this pectoral muscle and this trapezius, as well as the lats here, we're not getting the direction right. Even if we edit the radius, we're not really getting it to lie in the right place. We want it to be down the center line, for instance, right? And with an attachment on that side. This is a bit closer, but we want it to be more along this. So because we're going for straight lines in this case, we can quite easily um, use our point position to set up these um, tendon masks for the muscles that aren't quite working. And one of the reasons that it's very useful to do this procedurally instead of with the muscle paint is even though it's completely valid to use the muscle paint, remember that there's always the risk with the muscle paint that if you get a model change or if you change your mesh resolution, you're going to end up losing what you've painted. So the more you can proceduralize, the more you're likely to have some flexibility in being able to change resolution, etc. Hopefully it also means it can be faster. But even if it is a little bit more work to set up, if it's more stable, that gives it a benefit above the muscle paint. So let's look at what we what I did here. And this is just one approach to doing it procedurally, right? If you think of something else, by all means, go ahead and implement it. But um, this is just something that I came up with. So basically, in order to use the positions, I want to find the minimum and maximum X, Y, and Z values for each muscle. So to do that, I'm going to start off by saving the X, Y, and Z components of the position into separate float attributes. Then I'm going to use an attribute promote. And the very neat feature of attribute promote, which I'm not sure if it's a new feature or if I just was late in discovering it, but if you check on the piece attribute option, you can actually promote to um, basically a piece. So normally if you would promote from a point to a primitive, it would promote from point to if it's a surface mesh, the polygonal face. And in the case of this, where it's a tetrahedron, it will promote it to each tetrahedron. But instead we're saying it now basically promoted to each geometry piece. It's going to be stored as a primitive attribute, but um, it will be finding the minimum for this, for each piece of muscle, which is of course specified by the muscle ID. And you can also use multiple attributes. So here I've specified my three attributes that I've isolated in the previous node. I don't want to delete the original because I'm going to use them for the next one too. So I'm just going to change the name to Xmin, Ymin, and Zmin. And if you just put spaces in between, it um, knows how to split them into each component. So now I found the minimum X, Y, and Z positions. And I've done exactly the same thing with finding the maximum ones. And then I did go ahead and delete original because I don't need these X, Y, and Z floats anymore. It is all data that's in the position anyway. So now what I did is I went and I've selected all of my muscles that I want the tendons to run in an X, um, sort of along the X axis, right? So this one, this one, and this one. And what I then do is I've got this little vex wrangle here. This is basically just querying those prim um, attributes that I've just created, the xmin and the x max. And then I'm going to fit my the x component of my point position. Um, I'm going to refit it from the minimum x and the minimum and the maximum x to between zero and one. So now basically this x variable is going to be zero here and one there. And I'm just using the absolute value of it so that 
if it's something on the mirrored side, it will do it the same way, but for the other way around. If you're in your situation, you might, if you have a muscle that sort of extends a little bit past, you might not want to use the absolute value that I suspect you would. Then taking that sort of, that X variable, which is just the linear mapping from the one side to the other, I now specified a channel ramp with that X variable as an input. And it, if you then click this, it will create this ramp here. And now this side corresponds to X equals the X min. This side corresponds to X equals X max. And then you, this little shape here is now going to be giving us this um, ramp. So you can see if I go and tweak these, I can extend this out, right? And same for the other side. Okay. So now that is for the X direction. What I next did was I did the same thing, but for this, I only wanted to do it on the one side. I was happy with the, the tendon mask on the side furthest away from the center, but these muscles on, on closer to the center line, I wanted them to follow the X position. So I specified, I selected these ones and some others that I wanted to do the same for. It's exactly the same code. And then it sets it. Now I didn't finish these last two lines. Basically here, I just, this um, line here is saying, save this mask that I've created, mask variable that I've created into the tenon mask attribute. If it is essentially greater than the tenon mask that already exists. So this is a way as to basically save, to have it as a layer over what you already have. Okay. So for instance, if we look at the trapezius here and the trapezius was set here, this, before we set it, that's what the tenon mask looked like. And now this is over. And if I, let's say I just set this to zero. Oops, that was the wrong way around. I actually want to do it on this side. Now it's going to replace it with this mask. So if you want to completely remove the incoming tendon mask, you would, it's probably simpler to just set this to mask without the max like that. But if you want to have it as a layer over it, you would want to use this. Okay. If you create an integer attribute and you prefix it with group underscore, then instead of creating an attribute, it's actually going to create a group um, with this name. So if you look here, there is a group created called procedural tendon mask. There isn't an extra attribute created. So what I'm doing is all the points that I've edited, I'm saving into this procedural tendon mask so that I can access them later. So I do it in this one and I've done the same in this one and the same here. And I've just grouped them all into the same group. Um, I'll show you what I use that for later. Um, so I've shown for the X direction now for, in my case, I only needed it for this muscle here, but perhaps in your case, you have other muscles. In theory, I could have used it for these abs too, but the default settings was already worked pretty well for that. So I only did it for the sternocleidomastoid, but now you'll see that it nicely follows these edges because the edges are um, basically this runs in the Y direction. So I've just replaced everywhere where I used X before I've replaced with Y in this case. Otherwise it's the same. I use the same ramp even um, just to get that effect. And I haven't used the Z direction because I haven't got any muscles that are in the Z direction. But if you have a muscle that's in the Z direction, you can go ahead and duplicate one of these and change it to Z. So that's why I've um, promoted Z here too, just in case. And I also just wanted to show that if you go ahead and you say you've created 
you've grouped together a bunch of muscles and set it and then you decide oh actually just for that one muscle i'm not quite happy i just want to tweak it a little bit what you can do is you can use an attribute remap and specify just the muscle you want and make sure you set your group type to primitives specify your tenon mask and in this case i did it for this one but if you tweak your ramp you can now tweak the fall off and now remember you're not going to want the same type of ramp shape as you had here because you've already set this and now you're saying oh wherever you have a certain value between zero and one make it a slightly different value between zero and one right so that's why this ramp you use this kind of zero to one ramp instead of the hills on both sides ramp like we had before so let's say we want something like that and then here what i've done is i've just gone and taken the procedural tenon mask point group that i had before and promoted it to a primitive group um it just makes it easier for later on i'll even jump ahead to that basically if you remember from um the main video series i had this little attribute remap node where i created the muscle end mask from the tenon mask right this again is a procedural creation of a mask um, and what i did was i specified certain muscles for it what i've done now is i've just added this group procedural tenon mask to the beginning um, and because all of these are already a primitive group that's why i had to promote it to a primitive group here and it's also just uses less memory to store things on primitives instead of points um, so now if we view the muscle end mask instead we can see that that is now we're using all the same work we did over there to procedurally generate the tenon mask to procedurally generate the end mask so basically that's a way that you can hopefully pretty easily create procedural masks for your both your tenon mask and your muscle end mask then let's talk about the glue mask so often um, a place where you want to glue your muscles together is down the central lines right so this is an area where you don't want the muscles to really um, separate and move so we want it there and we want it down here so what i've used in this case and let's just display it there we go it's a very similar concept to what i have before in using the p the x component of the position um with the ramp and a fit the only thing is in this case i haven't gone and done a min and max per muscle because in this case i really just want the points really close to the origin or at least not the origin but this central axis so the x origin so to speak so um this here you can use to control the fall off um and i've just said all the muscle ids except those starting with c because i don't want this to be on the these central muscles right and right now this is going to override any incoming muscle glue you might have although remember muscle glue isn't created by default so in this case i still have my muscle to muscle glue specified um in the muscle paint afterwards so it's just using that as a starting value and painting over the top of that um, if you wanted to if you had it already before you could use a similar thing to this except just use um, muscle glue instead okay great so those are some ideas for how you can procedurally generate these masks to save you both the time of painting as well as the risk of losing painted work